What is up guys, Jimmy Jules 153 back with another Dreams Logic tutorial. Today we'll be going over the emitter gadget. The emitter is a gadget you can use to emit objects from within your scene at specific times. It's a very powerful gadget and can even be used to minimize the thermometer in certain circumstances, but I'll show you what I mean by this in a minute. At the very top of the menu here, we've got the object to emit. For this example, we'll just use the cube on the right. You can see when we select the cube, there's a line drawn from the gadget to the object. The cube will now no longer exist in play mode. This is just a representation of where the cube will be emitted from, but you'll see this in a moment. We can set the speed of the emit at the top with this slider here, and we can change the direction of it by dragging the arrow around like this. If we play the scene now, the cubes will be shot upwards in the direction of the arrow at five meters per second, at 1 second intervals. We can also set the rotation speed of the object when it's emitted. Which is indicated by the lines you can see spinning in a circle. You can adjust this rotation in the same way we adjusted the emit direction, just by dragging the bar on the right there. If we increase the speed of the rotation a bit more, you can really see it. The ignore parent speed option comes into play when the emitter is placed on something that's moving. Let's say we have the emitter on a character that's traveling at 5 meters per second. If we have the ignore parent speed turned off, the emitter will combine the speed of the character and the emit speed, so the emitted item would be traveling at 10 meters per second in this case. If we turn this option on, it will ignore how fast the character is moving and emit the object at 5 meters per second. You can also change how frequently the object is emitted with this slider here. If we play the scene, it'll emit the cubes and then stop. This is because the max emitted at once slider down the bottom here is at 20, and we can just increase this to get more. The slider above this is the emitted object lifetime. So you can set the emitted objects to disappear after a certain amount of time if that's what you're after. We could set this to 0.6 seconds and the cubes would disappear after that amount of time. Finally is the max emitted option, which sets the maximum amount of times an object can be emitted during the entire gameplay scene. We could set this to 22 and start the scene and only 22 items would be emitted before it stops outputting them. We've also got the emit mode, which at the moment is set to continuous, but we can set this to once. When it's set to this, it'll emit once every time it's powered on. Finally, down the bottom here is the Recycle Emitted Objects button. Basically, if this is turned off, when the emitter reaches its max emitted once limit, it'll stop emitting the objects. If it's turned on, it'll destroy the oldest object so that it can keep emitting new objects without going over the maximum limit that you've set. You can also use a keyframe or an action recorder to record the emit location being changed. So if you're in record mode, you can drag around the object that you've selected, and that will be recorded. I used a lot of emitters in the dreams that I made, including using it for minimizing the thermometer. For a bad dream, I used it to make the character throw the knife, and for the New Year's Eve fireworks display, I used it to emit the fireworks themselves. In Strike Force, though, I used them to emit logic at certain times so that it didn't overload the gameplay thermometer. You can see at the bottom of the screen on the left-hand side that I've got the board scanning chip. Before I put the AI in, I was able to have a duplicated copy of the board scanner on every single piece of the board. Once I added in the AI though, there were way too many individual logic pieces to do this. What I did instead was make a single chip that's able to scan each potential move for that turn and just emit the chip when and where it's needed. You can see the chip pop up in each column and then get destroyed once it's done its job. You can also see the gameplay thermometer jumps up 5% each time the chip is emitted then drops back down again once the chip is removed by the destroyer. If I was to have this chip on each piece of the board like I initially did, 
they alone would be taking up 210% of the gameplay thermometer, so the emitter is a very important and powerful tool for keeping that under control. Also just note that this level is completely unoptimized. I made things in a rush and didn't get the chance to clean anything up, so this 50% could easily have been brought down further. That's all for the emitter gadget guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.